Now I'm going to show you how to make a fully manual mixer configuration. We're not going to go into the configure mixer window this time. We're going to go from the create menu in the mixer pull down. Our first three entries allow us to create mono mixer strips, multiple mixer strips, and buses. I'm also going to teach you the relationship between buses and input strips. Let's go ahead and create a bus to start off with. We got a pop up box here. We can name our bus. Let's name it main uln2. We can choose different bus widths from mono up to 7.1 surround. Let's choose a stereo for right now. And we can choose either between a master bus or an auxiliary bus. Now, once that's added, we'll notice as I mouse around here that I don't have any options for direct outs, nor am I actually able to route this bus to physical output because the console really wants to know what bus is this particular box on. And the only way to tell it what bus this box is on is by actually feeding it an input from mixer strip. Let me go ahead and go to the mixer menu here and create a multiple, I'm sorry, create a mono mixer strip. All right. In the input field here, it's going to show me three things. First is the actual, the two boxes. I've got a ULN2 and a 2 at 8 2 And I can choose between either of the, in, you know, the attached box. If you have more than uh, two boxes, you're going to see more than two inputs. You'll also see uh, a pop here for buses. I'm going to come back to that in one second. If I choose on the ULN2 analog number one, okay, you'll notice at this point the direct outs come alive. I can now direct out uh, either pre-insert or post-insert to FireWire or my hardware outputs. At the bottom here, where I have to go ahead and choose my um, outputs to the buses, I can configure myself to the main ULN2 bus. Doing this actually now ties in the mixer and the input meter here, and I finally have uh, metering. And I can now option click the uh, fader to bring it back to zero. I've now assigned this box, which is the ULN2, to this bus. Once I've done that, I'm going to notice that I have my direct out now come alive in my bus, along with the ability to route to an analog output. Now, some things that have changed now in this input menu here. As soon as I actually routed this bus, I lost the ability to route to the 282, because now I've now kind of linked the ULN2 and this particular bus, and I can no longer grab um, sources from a different box because each bus needs to be linked to a specific single box. I also lost the ability to route to that bus, which means that, you know, in the case we were looking at this uh, input strip here, we had ULN2 and then below it was a 2882 and below it was a bus. And I could, at that point, I could route to the main ULN2 bus. At this point, doing that would create a feedback loop and the software intelligently stops you from doing that, which is very key. Now, lastly, I've actually routed this input strip to a stereo bus. Actually, it's changed my input configurations because then before I only had the choice to add mono sources, and now that I'm routing to a stereo bus, I can add stereo sources. That's a new thing from the pop-up menu here. Okay, now if I add another mixer strip here, I'm going to create one another mono strip. I now want to choose an input from the 2882. Okay, I'll choose analog one. Now, if I take my direct outs here, I can simply direct out to any of the physical or firewire hard firewire output assigned to that 2882. But to actually hear it through a bus, I right now cannot choose the main ULN2 bus, and that's because that ULN2 bus, again, it's been linked up with the physical hardware that it's attached to, which in this case is a different box. So if I want to hear the 2882 coming back, I actually have to make a bus for it. Go to Mixer, create a new bus. I'll call this one main 2882. I'll keep it as a stereo master bus. And now from this one, I'll actually choose, sorry, I'll choose the output of the input strip, as main to it at two, and I have that choice. And now that I've chosen that, I can go to the bus output and choose analog one, two, and now it's come alive. And if I want, I can go ahead and grab all my buses on one side and all my analog and my, all my analog inputs from the uh, boxes on the other. Now, here's a cool thing. I can also create multiple mixer strips at once by going to the mixer, create multiple mixer strips. Let's say I want to create four mono strips. Just choose four mono strips, and I can simply toggle this from mono to 7.1. So four mono strips, and I add them. Now I want to assign these guys to a bus. Here's a cool trick: if I select the first one and shift and select the last one, it highlights all of them. Now when I go ahead and assign these guys to a bus, either the main ULN2 bus or the 2882 bus, it assigns all four at once. It's kind of neat. Now I grab my input, which again, since I've chosen a ULN2 bus, I'm only going to see mono and stereo inputs from the ULN2. I'll grab and a one. And a two, oops, digital left and digital right. And I very easily uh, added multiple mixer strips here 
to create a custom mixer. Now, finally, one thing we can, one other thing we can do is start with a uh, template. I'm going to start with the 2882 basic setup. Now, this configuration, which I'm going to go ahead and map to the 2882, shows me all my physical inputs, ADA and digitals and gives me a DAW return from channels 1 and 2. What if I wanted to add channels 3 and 4? Well, could I go to Configure Mixer, click on the bus, and then scroll down and find the DAW 3 and 4? I could do that, but I could also go to Mixer, create a mono mixer strip, assign it to the main bus, and just simply grab from the input strip here, Stereo, DAW 3 and 4, which for some people is going to be faster, actually. And if I want to go ahead and opt click the fader, I can even make it a little bit wider because actually my DAW uh, 1 and 2 strips are a little bit wider. And go to set width for wide. So there's multiple ways of doing this in the console. We can go to configure mixer and have it do it basically automatically for us. We can choose from the pre-configured templates or we can do a completely manual mixer setup. Go into the mixer pull down window choosing either from creating a new mono mixer strip, multiple mixer strips, and creating buses and make our own custom mixer. So there's more than one way to skin the cat with the Mio mixer in version 5.